Section 2. Patentable Subject Matter We will start from a short introduction to the modern patent system. What is a patent? What does that mean by granting a patent on a specific technology? So, you may say a patent is a set of a group of exclusive rights granted by the government today for an invention. The invention must be new, evolves an inventive step, and is capable of industrial application. You may say the key features of a modern patent system is that the granting of patents on the technology gives the patent owner the legal rights to exclude or stop others from making, using, offering for sale, selling, or importing a product or process based on the patented invention. What does that mean? To individual patent owners, if you were the inventor, the owner of the patent, what well, could that be useful? Well, of course, it's very useful, very valuable. You see, the key features of a modern patent system compared to the later patents granted by the monarch in England, hundred years ago, is that the modern patent system, along with other RP system, is a private property system. It means the legal rights granted by the government, by the state, is a set of private property rights. Those are private rights, means you may dispose these rights, take out advantage of those rights privately with other individuals. This means you may use this technology by yourself or charge fees to allow others to use your technology. In the case of patents, you may transfer your ownership of the patents to a third party at the price. Alternatively, altern alternatively, you may give permission to a third party to use your technology for the production of products, for selling the products, for importing the products by means of licensing a license contract set for the conditions of using your patented technology without giving up your ownership of the patent. The modern patent system, as you may see, is granted by a state power, by the government, by the central government. So these patents granted by this government, by the governments of this country, of course, is not acknowledged and protected by the government in another country. It means you are granted a patent on your invention by the Chinese Patent Office, the National Intellectual Property administration of China. This is a Chinese patent. And this patent is only acknowledged, protected in China. Without your permission, no one can use your technology. In a sense of patents. However, in any other country where this technology is not patented, anyone can use it for free, legally. 
as you apply for the patents with the Chinese patent office and granted a patent, this means the details of your technology will definitely be disclosed completely. And anyone in the world would have access to your technology. So after patenting a technology, your patent rights is only protected in this country, but your patented technology will be available to anyone in this world, no matter they're in China or in other countries. Why? Because, as we mentioned again earlier, patents is granted, acknowledged by one state, and its validity is only limited to that type, to that territorial area. In order to earn protection in another country, you have to patent your technology in another country. In the, for instance, you patent your technology in China, in Japan, in the US, in a country in Africa. But it will be very difficult for you to patent technologies all over the world, over 200, around 200 countries and nations and areas, right? So to any company, any inventor, no matter how rich the company is, it's uh, highly, it's very unlikely that they will patent their invention in all countries, every individual single countries. It always depends on their strategy, picking up a few key countries to patent it. The patents granted by the governments, by the state, and it will be protected by the state. The government will enforce the patent rights. Anyone who breaches the patent law will be punished. So the state power will protect your private property rights, enforce your rights. But that's not for free. The enforcement bodies, for instance, the administrations, government ministries, and the police powers, right? The courts, they all operated at the very high cost. A lot of money. Why would the state protect? such a intangible rights for individual inventors at such a high cost because you say it's different from tangible property right your house your apartment your land you may protect your rights using your own um your own power right you look there have a look on your on your apartments and no one will enter into your apartments easily without breaking the door or breaking the breaking the wall right so you can um enforce your own rights if effectively sometimes uh, you may rely on the protection from the governments of course but uh, intellectual property, intangible rights. It's barely possible for you individuals to enforce your rights. You see, the states, the governments, take a lot of courts to protect your rights, to create the rights and protect it. For what? In exchange of your disclosure, of your new knowledge to the public.
the inventions, no matter the product invention or new methods, they are all great ideas, very valuable knowledge to mankind. As we mentioned earlier, the research and the development today it costs significant resources, monetary resources, human resources. All these brilliant scientists are working on these technical problems. Very expensive to solve those problems, right? So to disclose your invention would not just benefit you yourself, but to benefit the entire mankind. You see, that's the point. This is a social contract between the state and individual inventors. The individual inventors disclose his or her invention, new technologies, to the public in return they will be granted a set of exclusive rights, private property rights. So that's a social contract. The terms, conditions of this contract all set first in a text of patent law. Complete disclosure to the public. That's the application of any patent owner, the inventors. That's how the patent system work. Given the fact that disclosure is so important, so critical to the public, to the entire patent system, how can an inventor disclose his or her invention and disclose the details of his or her invention to the public. Today, we have a well-established system. By applying for patents, you have to submit extensive documents, information to the patent office. And then the patent office will publish the patent applications, any documents, included in the public patent applications to the public, make it available to anyone in the world. Today, the patent application materials will be made available in the a centralized database and in the official journal or gazette. So what are the type, what are the um, things can be patented? The different things patentable, uh, different patents granted on different kinds of uh, invention, decided the scope of uh, patentable subject matter. In most countries, when we're talking about patents, well, it's highly possible it covers patents, inventions, utility models, and design. As you might have some basic uh, idea, on the Chinese copyright law, we have invention patents, utility model, and design patents, industry design. But uh, the Paris Convention merely say that member countries shall provide protection for invention, utility module, and industry design. However, it's up to the member countries to decide what are the scope of inventions, utility models, or, industry, or design, the scope of a patentable subject matter. 
So in China, we have invention patents, utility models, and industry design. In the United States, you see, there are also three types of patents. Utility patents. Utility patents, actually, utility is different from utility module. It's utility patents, not utility module patents. Right. We'll be back to this topic later. In the US, utility patents, which is just a different term, used terminology used by the lawmaker, actually, you may just uh, make it equivalent to invention. So in, in the US, utility, utility patents, invention patents, that's just invention patents, and design patents and plant. Utility patents, inventions, design patents covers the shape and the surface of the object. And plant patents covers very unique kind of plants. A plant or animal, a living things, you say, it's not creation of mankind, but the tree outside there, right? The vegetable, oh, that's it's not uh, all these things, the plants, they're not patentable at all. What is patent here? What is patentable here? Plant patents refers to a very special kind of plant. It's created by mankind. We will see it later. You see, in the US, they don't have utility module patents. Utility module is also called petty patents, or which is very insignificant. Um, patents or you, compared to inventions, it's not that, technologically speaking, it's not that significant. Um, but it could be highly commercially valuable. So the differences between Chinese law and the US law, you see, under Chinese law, we have invention patents. In the US, yes, also invention patents. But number two, they don't have utility module patents. But we do have utility module patents in China. Number three, there is uh, industrial design patents, design patents in China, and also design patent in the US. Number four, the plant patent in the, in the US. But in China, we have a separate regulation called well, the plant varieties separate regulations to protect uh, new um, varieties of plants or in many other countries is also called the seeds of new plants protects the rights in new seeds of the plants and in the United Kingdom, for instance, design, industry design, is not covered under patent law. So in many, many countries, when they say patents, patent rights or infringements of patents, they're talking about inventions, having nothing to do with design. For instance, in the United Kingdom, in UK, the current legislation is called CDPA 1988. C stands for copyrights, D design, P patents, 1988. You say from the title, you may say in the UK legislation, patent is a different group from design. So copyrights, design, and patents provided under the law in three separate sections. So 
patents merely refer to inventions, technology, whereas design has nothing to do with technology. You see, why? That's why in many other countries, particularly in the Europe, design, industrial design, is covered in another separate law. Design rights, not patent rights. But the Paris, the Paris Convention, leave it to the discretion of domestic legislation to define what is a patent. As long as those industry properties, including inventions, utility modules, industry design, could be well protected. It doesn't matter the pro which pro approach you choose to protect these forms of property. So in order to be protected on the patent law, to be eligible for patent protection, the invention, usually when we're talking about invention or patent, now in a narrow sense, we are talking about invention patents. Inventions must be fall within the scope of patentable subject matter. All the things eligible for patents. So that would be the idea of uh, of what an in invention is about. Generally speaking, when we say invention, it could be a product, tangible things, tangible products, new materials created by mankind, or a method. So invention could refer to a material, a thing, a tangible thing, a tangible object, or a method called invention. Um, Inventions. Number two, the invention must be new. It's called novelty requirements. It must involve an inventive step. It's also called non obviousness requirements. It must be capable of industrial, industrial application or to be useful as a term used in the US law or industrial applicability, the term used in Chinese law. Basically, it says it must be capable of industrial application. So from number two, number three, and number four, that's called patentability test. This is statutory requirements for patent protection. Number five, it must be disclosed completely in a clear and complete manner in the patent application documents. So that's called disclosure requirements. But when we say patentability test, we refer to number two, three, and four. Novelty, non-obviousness, and usefulness. Number one, to be patentable, to be a patentable subject matter, there is a statutory class of things that can be patented. For instance, in the US law, as we mentioned earlier, the things can be patented includes utility, design, and plant. Utility here, you say, refers to invention. Invention means Whoever invents or discovers any new and useful process, machine, manufacture, or composition of matter, or any new and useful improvement thereof, may obtain a patent thereof. Of course, subject to the conditions and the requirements of patentability. So, 
So the things which define within the scope of utility or invention in the US law includes useful process, process, a method, machine, manufacture a machine, right? Man manufacture a machine, for instance, a device, or composition of matter, new drugs, or improvements of manufacture composition of matters. So that's uh, the definition of in of invention or utility in the US law. And the design. So invention is about technology, right? No matter it's about a process or a machine or manufacture or composition of matters. However, design has nothing to do with technology. You see here, patents for design. Whoever invents any new, original, and ornamental design for an article of manufacture may obtain a patent. You say, what is a design? A design is merely the surface or the package of the products. So it must be new, original, and ornamental only. Ornamental only. Only for decoration purpose. Put simply, design for products, patentable, refers to simply to make the products looks beautiful, looks attractive to consumers. It looks nice. How it looks. How the product looks. That's design. Has nothing to do with technology. Plant patents is quite special in the US law. You see, as I highlighted earlier, it's a very special kind of uh, plants. You see, whoever invents or discovers an asexually reproduced new varieties of plants. So it's produced by mankind, asexually reproduced. What does that mean? Let me check the dictionary. It's a new varieties of plant. So that's plant varieties is protected as a plant. As a as a patent in the U.S., however, in China we have a separate regulation for the protection of plant varieties. It's a regulation. Now it, this is a very interesting case concerning the classification clarification of uh, patentable things under U.S. law. Once again, please take a look at the scope of uh, things patentable. The US law says process, machine, manufacture, or composition of matter. And here in this very, very interesting and important case, Diamond versus Chuck Party. Chuck Party is a genetic engineer working for an oil uh, for GE General Electric uh, Electric GE is a generic a genetic engineer. What invented by Mr. Chuck Party is that he developed a bacterium. Well, this is a very interesting uh, case. What developed or created by this guy is a bacterium. It's bacterium. Bacterium is not a plant. It's not uh, an animal, but it's alive, right? 
So Chuck Party applied for two patents. Number one, he tried to patent the bacteria developed by him as the products or as a, as a living thing. But to patent the bacteria itself. Number two, number two, he tried to patent the method to develop the bacterium. So the two patents, right? A method patents to patent the method by which the bacterium is developed. Number two, to patent the bacterium itself. Well, the patent office has in, nothing to do with uh, the patent for the method to develop a bacterium because that's a method or a process to produce things, right? What troubles them, what confused the patent examiners was that whether a bacterium patentable or, patentable or not. Why is so confusing or so struggling? You see, the US patent law says that what patentable includes process, machine, manufacture, or composition of matter. Uh, to which category could uh, a bacterium fall within? Right? It's not a process. A process is an abstract idea, a method to do things, to produce things, right? Machine, a manufacturer, the old tangible products, a device, machines, a composition of matter. Right? The bacterium, they're, they're alive, but uh, they're not uh, animals, they're not plants. Well, that's patent application went up to the appeal board of the patents office, US patent USPTO patent and trademark office, and then it appeared a decision and appeared to all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States in 1980. In earlier 1980, the Supreme Court ground delivered its opinion, very controversial but very important opinion. That was a five to four ruling. The court ruled in favor of a Chuck Party. Says which basically say, well. The Supreme Court, the five judges, the majority judges, you see. But there are four minority judges. Even within the Supreme Court, that's very controversial, right? Five to four ruling. And there are only nine justices in Supreme Court. Anyway, the majority judges claim that anything created under the sunshine by a human could be patentable, anything. Well, that too much. The holding says, a live human-made microorganism is a patentable subject matter. It may constitute a manufacturer a composition of matter within the statutes. It may constitute a manufacture or composition of matters within the language used by the statutes, by the patent law of the United States. You see, that's a conclusion, and that conclusion was very influential internationally. By then, it's basically no doubt that a live human made microorganism bacterium is patentable, although it's 
it's a living thing. But why, you know, living things, you know, life not supposed to be created by mankind, only the nature or the God, right? How can human create something alive? That was beyond the imagination of people at that time. But today, with the gene, the gene technologies, right, we can create anything alive. But whether the things, this, uh, not alive, they, we can create animals, plants, animals, you say, animal clone, animals. Can we patent those clone animals? But using the language by the Supreme Court in Chuck Party, cloned animals, patentable, of course. It's a living thing. It's, 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 cre it's a creation, right? It's created by mankind. That's enough. It's patentable. That's a conclusion of the patents of the Supreme Court in Chuck Party. Well, the international conventions also define patentable subject matter quite broadly. So, what is not patentable? Or what is patentable? Well, basically, the legislation says that anything created by mankind under the sunshine is protectable, patentable. So, it's so broad. And then, Many lawmakers are trying to give uh, a list which says, well, at least the following things not patentable. So in most nation or national legislations, domestic legislations, patentable subject matter is defined negatively by providing a list of what cannot be patented. There are some differences, but uh, um, here, as you can see on the slides, those are the examples of areas generally being excluded from patentability. For instance, abstractions and scientific, scientific theories Aesthetic creations, those creations, artistic creations, pro, uh, is protected. It could be protected as copyright work, right? But not patent. Our schemes, rules, and a method for performing mental acts. Substances as they naturally occurred in the world. Inventions, the exploitation of which may affect public order, good morals, or public health. So that's a morality concern. Well, next one, diagnostic, therap uh, therapeutic, and surgery methods of treatments for humans or animals. Plants, animals, you say plants and animals, usually living things should not be allowed to be patentable. Otherwise, you know, you patent a cologne animal. It could be a cologne human. Other than microorganisms, bacterium, and a computer program, because computer program is protected as a form of uh, uh, copyright expression. So it's pro protected on a copyright law not patent law. On the Chinese law, you say, we also have a list enumerating the following things are not patentable, very similar to the list that we mentioned earlier. Well, here, um, number F, designs that serve mainly as indicators of two-dimensional printing goods, patents, the color, the combination of the two, that, well, this thing, right, that uh, design could be protected as a trademark or protected as a decoration of uh, a product or so trade dress under unfair competition law, but it's been excluded 
clearly, expressively from patentable subject matter. So animals and the plants uh, are not patentable under Chinese law or under the patent law of many, most countries, but the process and the methods used to produce the animals and the plants, of course, patentable, right? The method patents. Uh, once again, to summarize, international laws define invention in a very broad sense. From device, machines, manufacture, to abstract idea of method of using or making an item. You see, method, method patents, to patent a method. What is a method, right? Just ideas, abstract ideas. But, as we mentioned earlier, international laws, including trips agreements, allows member countries to exclude specific things to be patentable based on moral concerns. So if there's a morality concern and a public health concerns to protect public or morality, it is allowable to exclude these things from patentable subject matter. Number two, here I want to highlight again. Methods for treatment of humans in most countries are not patentable. Here, please pay attention. Method for treatment of humans, it does not mean medical or the, the drugs, right, the medicine used to treat disease or the med medical device used for surgery, right? Of course, those things, those are materials are patentable. Medical patents or, uh, or medical device patents, that's all okay. Method for treatment of humans refers to, here you see, diagnostic surgery methods for, of treatment for human or animals. Basically, put simply, it's about the methods learned used by a doctor to do operation for to do surgery, to treat disease, to treat humans or animals. Number three, plants and animals other than microorganisms, bacteria, are not patentable. So that's what's quite uh, controversial actually, right? The, particularly in the case of uh, cologne technology, cologne technologies, the technology of course itself is patentable. What is controversial, what we're talking about here is the lives, plants and animals created using the cologne technologies. So the, the cloned mouse, the cloned sheep. Why? They can use to clone humans, right? Given the language of the Supreme Court in Chuck Party, anything created by mankind shall be patentable. That's why I say this goes too much, much beyond what we can imagine. So basically today, patent law in the world, in any countries, forbidding the patents of animals. Well, the next quite confusing or uh, very important concept is, you see, what patentable including the, or the invention, right, when define invention, is it could be tangible things, right, manufacturer device, or uh, composition of matters, for instance, drugs, right. And method, abstract method, 
of to pro make products or to produce something. These are abstract abstract ideas, just knowledge. But the law also say that abstract, if too abstract, it cannot be patented. Why? Because it covers so many things. It's uncertain. For instance, the case law in the U.S. has uh, provides specific exceptions to the uh, to the term method or process as patentable subject matter. Number one, laws of nature not patentable. Number two, physical phenomena not patentable, and abstract ideas not patentable. The laws of nature and the physical phenomena, that's quite easy for you to understand, right? Not patentable. While abstract idea is not patentable, and that sometimes creates some confusing. How abstract it is, right? Method patent, you see. It is a method, method patent. It is about abstract ideas or the application of those abstract ideas. The process is about abstract ideas. Basically, it says that if it's too abstract, and then it's not patentable. The case law in the US basically developed a test to see whether a claimed process is patentable or not. The rule is here is called machine or transformation test. You see, it's all machine or. You see, number one, if the process is tied to a particular machine or apparatus, or so it's either A or B, right? Or not end. Or is the method transforms a particular article into a different state or thing, a different state or thing. This is called machine or transformation test. It means if the claimed process may pass machine test, okay, it's patentable. It may pass the transformation test, okay, it's patentable. For a very long time, over 30, 20 years. This machine or transformation test were, was believed to be the only test for determining patent eligibility of a process in the US. Well, that create another problem Given the case of uh, Bielski in 2008, that's about uh, a patent application for the method of doing business. It could be a combination of, there are many kinds of uh, method of doing business applied for patent applica uh, application, for patent protection. So, the method of doing business is very abstract. For instance, a method of delivering digital contents, film or music using iTunes system. Basically, the claim will say, well, step one, step two, step three, just a few you know, very abstract um, instructions saying, the buyers, sellers, and the internet users use uh, to click on the uh, price, and then uh, the instruction will be sent to the server. So the server, upon the demands of the internet users, it will, um, and upon the payments be made, uh, and then the that film will be that film or, or TV program will be uh, transmitted to your laptop. Basically, you're watching movie online 
right? That, that that's a that's a uh, a method of delivering copious materials online. And then the patents, uh, Hulu, right? Is a US is a popular online movie distributor, basically like ITE or Tencent Film in China. They try to patent that method of delivering copyrights contents to the public on the uh, internet. That's very controversial, you see. That claim, that's, that claim is about process, a method of doing business. It cannot, definitely it cannot pass the machine or transformation test. Why? Because it's not tied to any particular machine, right? Number two, it has nothing to do transforming a particular article into a different state or thing. So the lower court says, no, it's not patentable. In Bielski, Bielski is about another claim concerning um, a very special kind of uh, method of doing business, uh, particularly for the financial market. So the Supreme Court then think, well, look, for such a long time, the machine or transformation test was believed, was believed that the only test for determining the patentable eligibility of a process on the patent law. But that works okay. That's okay in the, in the age of industrialization. When we are talking about, uh, when we say more inventions, it's always about uh, machines or materials or products, right? But in the information age, the internet enabled many novel methods of doing things. So the conclusion of the Supreme Court says that, number one, the machine or transformation test is not the only test now. We think, borrowing the language of the patent law of uh, the US, the term process, to some extent, may allow for patenting of a method of doing business. If there is, uh, but you have to set first a few conditions. Uh, or it's a case-by-case case analysis. So you see, under patent law, today, the most challenging topic is the scope of uh, patentable subject matter. In particular, what is a patentable process, a patentable method, because it's just abstract ideas. How abstract? Is, is allowable to be patentable. In China, as we mentioned earlier, Chinese patent law covers the three area. So we have the three things covered under one single law, patent law of China. As I mentioned earlier, in United Kingdom and many other Commonwealth countries, Industrial design, industrial design is not covered in patent law. There's another separate legislation, just design law. And number two, in many countries, they don't have utility module patents. They simply don't have it. In Australia, years ago, they create a system granting utility module patents, which is called Innovation patents is uh, the term is used by the legislation is called innovation patents, um, very similar to the concept of utility module. And then I think yes, this year or last year they removed that legislation again. Basically, say oh that's not a bad, not a good idea. In the U.S as we mentioned earlier, design is protected as a 
patentable subject matter in patent law. They don't have utility module patents in the US. Here in China, we have inventions, utility modules, and designs. And what the difference is between the subject matter here? Invention refers to what is an invention and what is an utility module. The definition on the, the law is invention is defined as new techno technical solution relating to a product, a process, or in improvement thereof. You see, it's a technical solution to problems, to technical problems that relating to products or process. So it could be a product invention, a product patent, or process invention, right? a, a process patent. Utility module here is defined as new technical solution relating to the shape, the structure, or the combination of a product, which is fit for practical, practical, practical use. You have to pay attention here is utility model is only relating to products, right? Because it says that it's relating to the shape, the structure, or the combination of the products. So it's not relevant to method or process, right? Utility model is always about a product. Design. The design under Chinese patent law is defined as new design relating to the shape, pattern, color, or the combination of the product, which creates an aesthetic feeling and a fit for industrial application. So once again, as we mentioned earlier, design has nothing to do with technology. It's design patents is just to well, make the products look nice. The appearance, right? The surface, the shape of the products makes the beautiful, tempting, looks nice. How the products looks has nothing to do with technology. The differences between the three types of uh, patents is that for invention patents is protected for 20 years, utility modules and the designs for 10 years. The most significant difference is that for invention patents, the application must pass substantive examination, whereas you do the modules and the design only need to pass non-substantive examination. In terms of uh, examination, we will be back to this topic in the following slides. So an invention here, what is an invention on the Chinese law? It says, is a new and inventive solution to a technical problem. The scope of uh, invention and invention is related to, you say, the solution, is a technical solution to technical problem. Usually it's defined by technical features. What's the point? The point is, how can you differentiate one invention from another invention? Well, look, if you're trying to identify one person from millions of persons, right? How can you identify that person? You say, that's my girlfriend, that's my boyfriend. Who is that guy? Who is he? Who is she? You cannot just say that guy, right? Who? How can you, or what's the information you need to provide me in order to 
enable me to identify that specific person, specific individual from all mankind. The key information, the key features of that person, right? The key features. The name or ID number it could be even better. Or the uh, nationality, the color of his or her hair, or his or her skin, the, how tall this guy is, how old is he, where is he from? Right, the key features of that person, that individual. How can you dif differentiate one invention from another? Or how can you compare the diff two inventions drawing the conclusion that the two inventions were the different technologies? How? Technical features. The technical features or key technical features, the most important key technical features, most important features, key technical features to define the scope of a given invention. The key technical features must be provided in the, must be very clear in the application documents. An invention could be an entirely new device, products, method, or process, or may simply be an incremental improvement of the known products, process, technology. Right? It, it could be improvement invention. In the case of improvement invention, for instance, you patent a technology. And then I, based on your technology, improve it significantly. Then I will be able to be grant a new patent. But you see, to license or to use my patents, because my patent technology is based on your technology, right? Without your permission, I cannot exercise my technology, my patents. I cannot allow anyone else to use this patent because it's combined. Using my technology would meanwhile infringe your patent, you see, for improvements patents. In that case, what would happen? I would have to get permission from you in order to use my technology or allow the a third party to use this my technology. Sometimes this could be cross licensing. Why? Because uh, in order to use, because this is uh, an improved technology, my, this technology is much better than yours. So you want to use my a better this, this improved technology, right? And I also use it, have want to use it, but I have to get permission from you so we can exchange, right? Right? I would allow you to use my technology, the improved one, and you allow me to use your technology as part of uh, the, the 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 foundations of my technology. So there will be a usually there will be a cross licensing like a Huawei technology with Ericsson as Intel, they have lots of cross-licensing scheme arrangements. Well, utility modules, as we mentioned earlier, is uh, always about uh, a product. In many countries, as we mentioned earlier, and um, they don't have, they simply don't have, they don't simply don't protect, don't protect Utility modules. They think that is just insignificant. Industrial design. The design is the ornamental aesthetic features of a product, as we mentioned earlier. Well, and also in China again, 
is protected under patent law as a form of patent, as a types of patent. But in Europe, there's a separate legislation granting design patents. While even more in the Europe, the law protects registered patents. You can register for patent rights to, uh, to obtain higher level of protection. You may choose not to register for design rights, but for those unregistered design, you may also protect it under the law, but with very weak protection. So the design law is very complicated area, particularly in Europe. But the key point here is, you have to keep in mind, design is very, very distinct from, or very different from inventions or utility modules. Design is about how the product looks has nothing to do with technology. For instance, in this case, Magmatic versus PMS, the, the pictures here you can see, this is the, um, they call CRD community register design. This is a design registered by the plenty of Magmatic. That's an industrial design. And the right on the bottom and the right is a picture. That's a uh, the the kids, right? Uh, for travelers, for kids, for children. Uh, very popular products. I came across um, kids, children uh, using this uh, suitcase for many times in the airports. Quite convenient. Very very popular. And a very successful product. So uh, that's a real products on the market. Then in 2013, the plenty magmatic sued the defendants here, the PMS, for the infringement of the CRD we mentioned earlier, right? It's European Community Design Rights. It's called CRD stands for Community registered design. Community registered design. So the two products here, they the called PMS KD case. These are two examples of the KD case. They were sued for infringing the plaintiff's design rights. So here, what the kids will tell you, or what you should think about is that the defendant argue that, look, this is our design, is different from your design, so we're not infringing, right? But if you were the judge, you say you have to compare what? The similarities between the two design, two products here, right? And the, of course, first of all, you have to determine on the scope of the design rights by the plaintiff. Based on what? Not based on the products on the markets provided by the plaintiff, but by what? But by the photos, drawings, documents submitted to the authorities in Europe for CRD application by the plaintiff, right? Well, and then you de determine on a scope of for protection, the key, wh how, wh what, wh how, how to determine on the key scope of the, uh, this design, the key design features. What are the features as the key design features? Look, for instance, for this case here, the design here, right? There are four wheels. The four wheels, and uh, and also there's a home, right? On the head of each case, where it looks like an animal, right? It's cute. 
when you compare the product, the surface, the shape, right, of uh, the appearance of plenty of products, plenty of design, and the defendant's design. Of course, there are similarities, right? You say, well, for instance, it all look like an animal with a wheel at each of its four bottom corners and has a clasp at the front and a saddle shaped top so that it can be written on. The kids can write on it. So the parents can just, just uh, uh, put um, the kids and the kids. And there are also differences. There are different colors, right? And the home, you see, the different. Um, what are similarities and differences? So to determine whether the different defendants in infringing or not, well, the course determine on the scope of uh, the design patterns, the design rights. Sorry, not design patents, uh, it's just design rights because it's a European case. Well, actually, there's also, um, I think that case delivered or, or tried in, in Hong Kong, right? but it's about uh, European community design rights. So, anyway, here, but the, the plaintiff argue that, for instance, look, in our design, uh, the case you see looks like an animal. Number two, there are four wheels, right? four four wheels on the on on the on the bottom, right? The four on the bottom corners, like the four wheels looks like uh, the four legs of the animal, right? But the defendants argue that, well, yes, we also have four wheels. And then one wheel at each of the four bottom corners, which clearly make it look like uh, the legs of uh, the animal. But that's not for that's that's a, that that's a, that that serve a functional purpose. Why? It's not for making it looks nice. It's a functional is to solve the technical problem. Why is it functional? Because when the children sit on the back of uh, that case, so they can write on it. They can move it, move with it. Basically like uh, you, you have your kids, your children sit uh, in a trolley, so you can pull it or, or pull it and following with you. So if that argument is established, it means that feature itself is not within the scope of uh, design protection. Why? Because design does not protect any functional factors or functional technical solutions in the design. If the plaintiff looking for protection, you should apply for patent protection. For patents. This could be in China, you can apply for maybe, if not the invention patents, you can apply for invent, uh, utility module patents. Uh, util mode, pa utility module patents about uh, the technology, right? The technical solution. But for design patent, it's simply for making the product looks nice. So in the end, the plan here, the uh, the the court concludes that well, there are similarities between the two design, and it's, there are also differences to us to the court. It was uh, of the view that um, they don't share similarities extensive enough. 
to es establish that the defendant's design is identical or similar to the plaintiff's design, so that's not infringing. And this quite, uh, actually it's very interesting case, quite controversial because uh, it may, it may uh, change uh, the, the design market significantly. Um, we don't have that much time to go through the details, but the point here is, number one, to determine the scope of a design, you have to figure out the key design features of the design. That determine, define the scope of a design rights. Number two, number two, you have to, uh, in order to, why are you determining the scope of key design features? Any functional uh, factors or any function, any design that's relevant to the functioning of the products or technical uh, issues, any technical design shall be excluded from design protection. Okay, this is a case decided by the Supreme Court of China concerning the method for the manufacturing of drugs. It is a process patent. So from this case, you all have the reading materials online. So the point of this case is that it's a process uh, patent, method patent. So the most difficult part when to sue the, the infringer is that how can you prove that the infringer actually was using your method to make these products because that product could be produced using different methods, different process, right? How can you, because no matter what the process is used to produce the product, so all the, the, the final products is exactly the same, right? It's exactly identical, just a, for instance, the drug or mineral water. Right, the product itself is, is not different from each other. Just a, that product, exactly the same product. What matters is we're using different method. This method, this process is patented. So how can you prove the defendants, uh, the, 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 the defendants are using, how, how can the plaintiff convince the court that the, the finger or the defendants was actually using the patented process? Right. So that's uh, a very interesting case. Of course, it is being uh, published by the Supreme Court as uh, as a leading case. Um, the rules being clarified here in the judgments. So just go through the summaries of the case to see. Uh, you don't need to go through it carefully or deeply because uh, you will see how dif how how difficult it is to understand uh, the entire judgments, not because the rules, the law is so complicated, they're quite simple here, right? But what more complicated is the technology, right? Can you read the judgments? There's just so many jargons, terms about the chemical, uh, the manufacturing of chemical, or chemical stuff or, or drugs. Uh, it's simply not manageable even to me. Uh, you, you have to have uh, uh, for for judge, uh, even for lawyers, they should have they must have they would have to rely on some uh, technological expert. And the next case is about the design patterns again. Is about how to determine the scope of a design key design features and how to determine the scope of the design rights. Basically, it's about how to determine what exactly the design is. How to determine whether the defendant's design is not the plaintiff's design. Key design features. Next requirements, disclosure requirements. We mentioned earlier, the patent law is uh, 
is basically uh, like a social contract between the state, the governments, and the individual inventors. So in order to obtain legal protection patents, the inventor must disclose the invention completely, the full disclosure requirements, full disclosure. In a matter, in a manner sufficiently clear and complete for it to be carried out by a person skilled in the specific technical field. Basically, it means anyone in that field, in that technical area, with this application document in hand, should know how to carry out this invention, it means should know how to make the products or know how to use the method explained in the documents to produce the products without any further uh, inventive endeavors, efforts. So with these documents, patent technologies, uh, the patent documents, uh, the information disclosed in the uh, documents is all enough to this person to carry out your invention. So sufficiently enough, it's called full disclosure requirements. That's the legal obligation of the inventor. That's the obligation under the social con contract, right? If the inventor failed to do so, what could be the consequences? It could be, for instance, the patent, de patent application could be denied by the patent office but it's highly possible that um, um, the inventors prepared the document so deliberately hiding some key information. You know, those patent examiners, they were all individual human beings. It's highly possible that uh, to the shortage of their knowledge or they made a mistake. They thought this information was disclosed already completely enough, but actually not. Right. And then by and then granting a patent, so that's a mistake. Should this patent should not be granted? What would happen? Number one, if it's not fully disclosed, your patent application could be denied if it's aware by the. Uh, the patent examiner is aware of these facts. Number two, even not the patents granted to you by mistake, anyone in the future could challenge the validity of your patents, arguing that, well, your patent should be invalidated. And then that's called post granting procedures or post-granting proceedings, invalidating and uh, revocation. So the patent granted by the patent office could be invalidated or revoked. We'll be back to this, uh, uh, this patent application proceedings and post-granting proceedings uh, later. Now, next topic or relevant to disclosure requirements is that consider, because we have all the basic information and knowledge here, considering patents and the disclosure requirements and the advantages of patents and why patents are useful to individual inventors, right? But to protect the invention, patents is not the only choice, right? You just can keep it as a secret and assign the uh, agreements with anyone who want to use your trade secret or technological secrets. You protect it on a trade secret law, right? Keep it uh, as a secret. So, in any case, to any individual inventors, if the invention may fulfill the patentability requirements, 
patentability requirements, the three key patentability requirements will be discussed later in the following slides. The inventor will face a choice. Keep it as a trade secret, patent it, or just disclose it to the public without any fee charged. Why? Why inventors would do this? Just disclose it. Why? It's called defensive publication. Why is the, how can it be defensive? Okay, that will be the topic for our discussion class in the next time. So be careful here. Your assignment is trying to interpret it, what I put here on these slides. What does that mean? If you were the inventor, or if you were the counsel for, for a company, for the inventor, how would you advise the inventor to make a choice? Keep it as a trade secret, patent it, or simply disclose it? Why you have to, why you would disclose it? Why? Do some research. The reading materials already give you some preliminary information. And then to dig a little bit deeper, this is very important for you to understand the entire RP system, patent, trade secrets, or uh, unfair competition law for the protection of trade secrets. Um, so, we will have about, I think, about uh, 20 minutes uh, for discussion.